Man, I really like these AG01 gibbles on my radio. They are just amazing. I feel like sometimes though, I hear weird noises when I'm using them. Like I'll just go to do this, mess around with them a little bit. Maybe I do that and hear the spring noise. Did you hear that? That's exactly what I'm talking about. What is that? What is that? Are my gimbals haunted? I want your gimbals. Gimbal ghost. Hey everybody, I'm Bacon Ninja. And today I wanna to talk to you about a cool tool for adding stick overlays to your videos. FPV pilots always want stick overlays. Like It's almost like we wanna know what the other person is doing with their thumbs so we can emulate it or something. That's actually exactly what we want it for. We wanna see how they're doing those sweet tricks when they do them. And there's a lot of ways to get stick overlays. But today I'm gonna to show you a way that uses your black box logs and generate some really nice looking sticks for your videos without you having to hang a GoPro in front of yourself or do anything funny like that. Nobody wants to walk around with a GoPro strapped to their chest and then cut the footage together from a little GoPro on top of your flight footage. That just, that's a nightmare. So today we're gonna to use a tool called Gimbal Ghost. But before we get started on showing you how to use Gimbal Ghost and how to get those sweet looking stick overlays on your footage, I just wanna to talk to you about what it actually is. So this is a tool, it is not the first tool to generate digital stick overlays for your videos. There was actually one quite a while back by a guy named Bastian Sonderman. You can still download it on GitHub and it does the same thing. In fact, Gimbal Ghost uses some of the resources from the original made by Bastian Sonderman. A guy named Joshua Davidson put this thing together because the original gimbal overlay thing that Bastian came up with required you to actually use a transparency mask if you didn't want a black box around your sticks. And that's kind of a hassle in editing. It's an extra step. So what happened with Gimbal Ghost was really just a search for getting rid of the extra step. And that's what we have today, is this really easy to use tool that uses the same awesome stick overlay from the original, and it doesn't require any additional transparency work on your part. You can just dump these right on top. It'll generate them in 30 FPS or 60 FPS in case you wanna do slow-mo, or maybe you're shooting with a 60 FPS frame rate and you don't wanna use a mixed frame rate media for your editing so that it doesn't take 900 years to export unless you're using Premiere, then it still takes 900 years to export. And that's why Gimbal Ghost is my pick for when I do stick overlays. And I've been doing them quite a bit lately. You probably noticed I did a trick tutorial video and I actually used the Gimbal Ghost overlays for that. And I've put it in a couple of my one pack edits not too long ago. They look something like this whenever you get them all together. That's a really nice representation of what my fingers were doing according to my black box logs. And those don't lie. So that's what my fingers were doing on the gimbals as I was flying. And I didn't have to hang a GoPro on my chest to do it. And uh, you know, cut out some kind of weird thing where you see my hands and my uncut fingernails on top of the sticks, which have all kinds of gunk on them because I use those pointy sticks and it gets gross. And then I didn't have to do some weird feathering effect outside, so you don't get my whole, yeah, it's a whole mess. You wanna use something digital if you can get away with it. Trust me, it's way easier than going the GoPro hanging on your chest route. So let's dig into exactly how to get Gimbal Ghost installed. And then after that, I'll show you how to use it. And then after, after that, I will show you how to clip it together and get it all lined up real nice so that you can have an easy time making your stick overlays and you can share them with the masses and they can be amazed at your crazy finger dexterity like all of us FPV pilots are by other FPV pilots. Now let's get Gimbal Ghost installed and the first step to that is to go to its GitHub page. So you can see I'm at github.com slash gimbal hyphen ghost slash gimbal hyphen ghost. On this page, you're gonna wanna go to the releases and the current release is version 1.2.0. 
that is pretty prone to being updated. So if it gets updated, just get the newest one, whatever the newest one is out there, get it. So I'm gonna go ahead and get version 1.2. I click that. And then if I go down a little bit here, we can see all of the installation packages and we're gonna want the gimbalghost.exe for running Windows. And then once that exe downloads and it may take a while mine actually took like 15 minutes and i have gig internet i'm assuming that github is just limiting it somehow so be patient go i i don't know like put new props on your quad or something while it downloads and then come back uh, but we have it now so we're going to want to run the exe that we just downloaded let's go do that on my computer so just double click the exe and obviously run once that opens up, it'll launch the installer. You can pick only for me if you want, that's fine. Uh, typically that's the thing you wanna do anyway. Just run through the installer, let it have all the defaults. It'll install pretty quickly. So just let it run through the process and then once the installer is finished, we'll, uh, we'll run it for the first time. And I'll show you how to use the thing. And before we get to that point, let me just tell you a couple of things about the actual logs and using it with this. This will be using our black box logs. And if you don't already know, there are two different kinds of black box logs that come out of our quads. There are BBLs that go into the onboard flash of, of, of your quad. Normally, if you have like a eight or 16 megabyte flash, the BBL is what's gonna be in your black box logs. If you have an SD card, or like me, if you have something that has a 500 megabyte flash, like my SpeedyV uh, F7 V3 flight controller does, it's actually gonna present itself as an SD card, and those are going to be BFL logs. So they're a different log type. A BBL kind of combines multiple black box logs into one concatenated thing. Uh, BFLs are more individual logs. I don't know why Betaflight does it differently if you have an SD or flash, I'm sure there's technical reasons for that that are beyond my Betaflight expertise, which is minimal. Um, so anyway, just keep in mind that there are two different kinds. Now, previous to one of the most recent versions of Gimbal Ghost, it would only let you use the BBL files. But graciously, Joshua, who is working on this project, added the ability to use BFL files for people like me who have the SpeedyV V3 F7s or an SD card where the B, the BFL files are what we get. So Gimbal Ghost just finished installing. Let's head over and I'll show you how to load up your black box logs into Gimbal Ghost. So over here in Gimbal Ghost, you're just gonna go to select black box files, and then you're gonna go find some black box files. And I have some set aside specifically for this, just for this instance where I can show you how to do them. I have two different kinds. So I have the kind you'll get out of the eight or 16 megabyte flash. And I also have the kind out of my flight controller, which uh, presents itself as an SD card. So let's go ahead and do these, the BBLs. And you'll notice in BBLs, you have an all, a one and a two. These are the various flights and this is the whole file. You can actually just pick the various flights. So I'm just gonna pick flight one here and hit select. You'll see it populates it right into Gimbal Ghost. Now let's say I had the SD card version, I can go back and get one of my SD logs and I'm gonna go ahead and select all three of these BFLs. These are three flights that I had. Uh, select them all at once and put them in here. You see, I can kind of mix and match the BFL and the BBL. Great work, Joshua, for adding this in. It was a real pain when I first started using this and all you could use was BBLs and I didn't have any because my flight controller only had BFLs. Much love, man, for adding that into this app. So now that we have them loaded up, let me show you the settings and then we'll do some exports and you can see how it works. And the settings are pretty straightforward in here. You really only have the transmitter mode, which I fly in mode two, like a normal human being. If you're flying mode three or four, leave a comment below because I wanna know who you are and I wanna understand what's wrong in your brain. No, I understand, it's fine. Other countries, other theories about how sticks work. But I fly mode two and most of you do out there too. So just leave it on mode two if you fly mode two. If you're in some other country that flies mode three or one, I can't remember which one it is, select that. Cause otherwise it's gonna look really weird when you export your black box stuff. So let's head back over. There's just one more setting to show you. And that is the output FPS. So you can pick multiple output FPSs. This is really gonna be based on what you're trying to do with the Gimbal Ghost footage. If you shot it in 30 frames, you can absolutely export in 30 frames. If you shot it in 60, you can absolutely export in 60. 
But maybe you wanna do a slow-mo or something. So you can go up to 100 or 120 and then really slow it down and the gimbals aren't gonna look all, you know, sloppy or jerky if you're trying to do a slow-mo. Maybe you're doing a trick tutorial and you wanna slow-mo down a section. I actually did that in mine. I fly with my camera normally at 30 FPS. So I exported these at 60 FPS so that I could slow it down to 50% speed and it still have a fluid motion when played back at 30 FPS. So just think about what you're gonna use them for. Most people still fly at 30 FPS and if that's you and you are gonna slow it down, just export at 30. It'll go a little faster and the files will be smaller. So I'm gonna select that for mine. Let's go back and do that. So 30 FPS for me and just hit back. So all we do now is hit render and we just let it go. The first thing it's gonna do is it's going to parse all of the files. You see it doing that. And it's gonna decode them and then parse them and then export them. So you see parsed and parsing going on there. The parsing takes a little bit of time. It's really not very long at all. In fact, if you use the Bastion Sonderman version of this, the previous older version, it took forever to export the videos. I mean, forever. I think I put five or six in there and I just walked away for like 30 minutes and let them go. But this one's actually almost ready to do the export. Let's check that out before it finishes. And once all these say parsed, it'll go right into rendering them. You can already tell they're gonna be .mov files. So hopefully you have something that can handle .mov. If you don't have anything native on your computer that handles .mov, you can use VNC or VLC media player uh, that handles .mov. And if you're using something like Premiere Pro, it can import .mov natively. So it's not a problem there. You see they're rendering pretty darn quick. It's a... Uh, pretty awesome how quick this is compared to the other one that I was using previously. And now that they're all rendered, all we do is we go back to our, the same location where you got the files from is where it's gonna put them back. So let's go back to there. So here are my files. And if I just open one of these with VLC media player, you can see the sticks. There are my sticks during the flight. And no, the resolution doesn't look great because this is blown up to full HD. But when you're using them in the real world, you're gonna wind up using it smaller, probably at the bottom of your footage. And I'll show you here in a minute when I go to put them on top of footage and show you how to line them up, uh, what it looks like, because there's actually a circle around the gimbal. It's not these squares, uh, but we'll go over all that in a second. Just know that you're good to go now. You can import this into your project. You can lay it over something and show your sticks. There you go, you've done it. Congratulations, you can now show your finger awesomeness to all the other FPV pilots in the world. But if you don't really know how to do that part, the adding it and then the getting it all lined up, I'm gonna cover that next. And I'm gonna do it in Adobe Premiere Pro because that is the editing software that I use. So if you're using anything else, Final Cut, uh, DaVinci Resolve, I'm sorry, this is not the part of the tutorial for you. Just know that I probably crashed Premiere Pro 15 times while I was doing this. So you can laugh about that and just skip ahead to uh, my summary thoughts because that's what's after this. But if you are one of those Premiere Pro people, hang around, let me show you how to line the sticks up. If, if you're using something else, it might still apply. I mean, I'll show you a technique. So here we go. And here in Premiere Pro, I have laid out a flight. This is just one flight that I did the other day. So I've got my flight out in the timeline here. And then I've got my stick overlays on the left. And if you're wondering how you line up the stick overlays, like what number goes to what flight, there's a really easy tip for that. And that is after you've disarmed the quad in Betaflight, it will pop up a screen that gives you some statistics. And one of the things you can put in that disarm statistic window is the black box log number. So what I did here was I actually after I disarmed, read the black box log number that came up in that screen. And then before I shut the camera off, I turned it around and looked at myself and I just said, this is black box log. In this case, I think it was number eight. Uh, so that's a really easy tip. You can just look at the end of the video to see what black box log goes with it. Otherwise, you know, sometimes you don't clear out your black box and you'll get 30 logs in there if you have a big enough chip or an SD card and you only flew four packs and which ones are your logs? Or maybe you had some where you disarmed and the log cut off, but the HD cam didn't. Uh, so then you'll have to kind of piece them together. But if you tell the camera at the end, 
it will help maintain your sanity in the future when you go to try to pair these. But I do know which log this is, so let's just put that one on top. And that would be this one here. So I'm gonna drag this on top of my clip. Now you can see there are, they are two different sizes. They are totally two different sizes here. Um, there are my sticks, real small. So I'm gonna go ahead and make them bigger, mainly just so I can see them right now. Uh, we're not gonna size it for use yet. I'm just gonna make them big enough to view. And what I wanna do is because the black box logs start at arm. I wanna find the first throttle movement. You see that there? The first throttle movement that I make, which was right here. That's the first movement that I made. That's where I took off. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to trim the stick video to that spot because I know that's where I took off. And then if I look at the audio, if your camera has audio, it makes it easier. If it doesn't have audio, you can just scrub through what I'm about to tell you now and find it. But if you have audio, you kind of get a hint as to where to start. So since the audio starts here, I know that that's about when my quad lifted off the ground and the motor started making noise. So I'm gonna go there. And then what I'm gonna do is use the arrow keys to kind of scrub through frame by frame until it takes off. Because that's where I lined up my gimbal stick. So that's about where the quad lifted off the ground right there. So if I drag this, because we've already trimmed it to where it takes off and I put it to where I found it takes off, here in the flight footage. Look at that, they're lined up. They're lined up all nicely. Look at me fly, check that out. Oh yeah, working really well. And that's all there is to lining them up. If you shot in the same frame rate as your gimbal ghost and your editing software that's doing something weird. If you shot at something like 24 and you export it at 30 with your gimbals, Premiere Pro will handle that just fine. Some editing software might not, but the real easy way, just find the first throttle movement because that's the first thing you always do when you take off is move the throttle up. Find that first throttle movement frame, find the first frame that your quad takes off from the ground, that first frame of, of movement, not a bobble, but actual movement and put them together. That's all there is to lining it up. There you go. Now you have stick overlays. You can make them whatever size you'd like. You can make them big or small. You can add transparency in your software, anything you wanna do. But now you have sticks and people can see your fingers and know your thoughts and understand how you live your life. All from a stick overlay. I don't know if they can get all that out of it, but they'll get some of that out of that anyway. So, you know, I'm halfway right or 25%, something like that. And now that I've showed you all my secrets, go out and do it yourself. Get your black box logs, clear out your black box chip before you go, if at all possible. It'll make your life simpler. Uh, make sure to note what black box log at the end of your flight with the disarm screen lines up with your HD cam and prosper. You can make your own really cool stick overlays. They look really good, especially compared to that weird, like hold your phone over the radio kind of thing that you can do. Don't do that, just use this. It's very simple. And Joshua Davidson is actually working on this project all the time. If you have any ideas for additions, shoot him something in GitHub. He was very responsive when I talked to him about adding the BBL, uh, the BFL, instead of just BBL logs. Uh, within a week, he had that added. So top notch dude. Uh, definitely if you have some suggestions, let him know, use this tool and enjoy it. And that's it. That's all I have for this week. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. If it's been helpful, give me a like. If you really enjoyed it or just think I'm a rambling stupid idiot, you wanna see how many more times I ramble, feel free, feel free to subscribe. I'll continue to butcher words to your heart's content. But until next time, stay greasy and I'll catch you later.